Hello and welcome to our New Mexico history course. My name is Brandon Morgan and I am the instructor for our course. I'm looking forward to getting to know each of you this summer as we study New Mexico's past together. I'm looking forward to learning from your insights on New Mexico history. The main purpose of this video is to walk you through the way the course is set up, um, show you the navigation and so on, so that you'll know where to find everything that you need to succeed in the class. Um, also, I did want to mention uh, an announcement that I'll be making in various different places. Um, this summer, between June 15th and 24th, I will be on a family cruise. Um, it should be a lot of fun. I'll say more about it in my personal intro on the discussion board. Uh, but the point that I want to make here is that I will be off the grid. Um, you can leave me emails and messages, but I won't be getting back to any of those until the 25th, 26th. Um, when I also provide you feedback on the work that you will have done during that time that I'm gone. I have set things up in advance so that everything will be in place for you to succeed, uh, for you to continue work on the course. Um, I just won't be um, in contact with you then. So I wanted to make that known right off the bat, uh, make you aware of that. I'll be posting more announcements as we go along, um, but I will be taking personal leave and um, this will be the first vacation I've had in quite a while. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, <clears throat> also, I'm very much looking forward to uh, getting into a new semester of New Mexico history. This summer, I'm teaching two sections of this course. The one that we're looking at here behind me is section 51. I've turned the student preview on, um, as you can tell from the top stripe there. Um, just to make sure that you are seeing what you will see uh, when you go into Blackboard and not what I see, because those are, aren't always the same thing. Um, also, if you're in section 52 of this class, uh, please note that the background for your course is not yellow, but everything else about it is the same. Um, there are a couple exceptions to that. You have a separate syllabus. Um, you have a separate timeline that you're working on, uh, just to make sure that there aren't too many people working on a single timeline at the same time. Um, but, you know, again, all of that is are things that you'll just come across as you work through the class. Um, please ask me questions whenever you have them. I do try to be as approachable as possible because um, I know that many of us are not used to using the digital tools that we'll be using in this class. Um, things like TikiTaki for the timeline assignment that I mentioned. Um, things like Twitter and Adobe Spark are very powerful for um, thinking critically about history and about how information is disseminated about the past um, and also for sharing our uh, knowledge and our interpretations of the past with one another. But not all of us have experience with those. I've placed tutorials throughout the course in various places. Um, they are screencasts for the most part, so much like this one, um, you'll see my head and you'll see me walk you through how to do things. Please take advantage of those. Um, I've tried to be as thorough as possible with those, as, uh, or as thorough as I can with those. Um, if you have questions, once you've taken advantage of all of those materials, please don't hesitate to ask because I'm always happy to help. And again, I know that not all of us have experience with these tools and that uh, many of us need a little bit of help. Also, and I note this in the syllabus, but I'd like to underscore it here as well. Um, if you feel more comfortable being anonymous on Twitter, um, that's more than fine. Please take advantage of that. If you do make that choice though, please let me know via email privately um, what your Twitter handle is so that I can make sure to give you credit for the work that you've done there. Okay, so looking at our course then, this is what you see when you log in. We have Emiliano Zapata, um, who is a figure from the Mexican Revolution, uh, but is also a figure in Tierra Amarilla um, in New Mexico, and we'll, we'll get to that by the end of the course. <coughs> You can use these links to find the announcements. Um, please check those regularly. Uh, you can use this link to get to our course hashtag on Twitter um, and, of course, to see your grades. You can also use the links over here, my grades, announcements, and then just your own Twitter account to do the same things. The reason I'm pointing all that out is just to say that in this course, there are usually a few different ways of doing things. I set it up that way so that you can get to what you need as quickly as possible um, with the understanding that as long as you keep tabs on the syllabus, which of course is here in the syllabus tab, and on the learning modules, um, if you know what's going on in both of those, 
then you'll know what assignments are coming up. Um, you won't miss anything, and you'll be right where you need to be in class. Um, other than that, you can use all of these other tabs to help you locate the information, the um, drop boxes for assignments, and so on that you need at that moment. That should become apparent as we go along. I just clicked on the Start Here tab uh, just because I'd like to point out that although you're already watching this video that I've placed here, please do click on the Start Here module. Um, much of the information there is reference type information, but it's important. Um, it's important for you to understand what's there so that if you need to reference it, you'll know where it is. Um, so please just take a look through that, see what's there. Um, there are links to the syllabus and things like that, but there are also links to um, things that will help you out with using Blackboard, um, your browser check, also a video from the Dean of Students about uh, academic, uh, academic honesty, and uh, that kind of thing. So again, please take advantage of what's there, look through and know what's there. I've already emailed the syllabus out to everyone before today. Um, I will try to do that again uh, here soon. I'm making this video on Wednesday before classes start. So I'll send out a, another email with the syllabus just in case a few people have dropped and others have added um, and that sort of thing uh, to try to catch everyone. Uh, but here's where you can find a link to the syllabus. Um, as you know, I'm going to open another tab right here. Um, this is what happens if you click on that link. It opens the Google Doc in which is contained our syllabus. If you're in section 51, this is what it looks like. Section 52, this is what it looks like. Um, again, the information there is the same. You'll be doing the same assignments. Uh, it's just that there are two separate sections of the course. Um, you can find links to the discussion board requirements, the journal instructions in the syllabus, um, but they're also here in the syllabus tab as well. Please look at the instructor information tab, um, not just to see info about me, uh, but also if you need to send me a text message, if you need to email me, or if you want to find me on Twitter, you can send me messages there. Um, here's a photo from our study abroad last year in Guatemala. We're hoping to be able to do that again in 2020. So just as an aside here, a little tangent, if that's something you're interested in, please let me know so that I can put your name on an email list so that I can send you information about the CNM study abroad to Guatemala that will be taking place in May of 2020. So scrolling down, here's the part that I mentioned was important. Um, here's where you can read about the expectations that you can have from me in terms of my response time to you. Also, here are my expectations for you. Um, in terms of the late policy, I do accept late work, um, but I want you to let me know, you know what's going on so that I can make sure that we have a plan in place to help you get that work done. Um, also, here's uh, the netiquette policy and some guidelines about digital citizenship. All important information to think about as we work together online. <clears throat> the course schedule is in the syllabus. So again, like I mentioned, many ways to get to things. Uh, but it's here for quick access if you'd like it. If you like the Blackboard calendar, there's a link to it here. As I mentioned, the learning modules, uh, once you know the syllabus, are the most important way of understanding what's going on, understanding when due dates are coming up, and so on. Um, I will be adding an announcement here in Unit 3. Um, no, it's right there. Never mind. I'm way ahead of myself. Um, so right here it says I'll be on my cruise again so that you'll know um, that during Unit 3, the second half of that unit, um, I won't be getting back to you. However, Unit 2 through Unit 6 all follow the same general patterns. We're, of course, studying different topics and different events but we'll be doing the same kinds of activities with those events and with those topics. So uh, if you understand what's going on in Unit 2, you'll all be all set to complete the work that you need to do in Unit 3. I'm going to show you Unit 2 because, like I just mentioned, it's typical of what you'll see most of the time in our class. Unit 1 has uh, different due dates. It only lasts for one week, whereas all of these other units last for two. So in Units 2 through 6, Excuse me, there will be some work due at the end of the first week, the first Sunday. So each unit starts on a Monday and ends on a Sunday. By the first Sunday, so after the first week of working on a unit, you need to have completed the readings and the reading tweets. So I'm over here pointing to the table of contents. Um, by the end of the second week, you will need to have completed your timeline submissions 
So there's an ID step and a connection step. So two different things to do on the timeline in each unit and your journal. So those are all things you do during the second week. Um, when you come into a unit, you'll see this intro and objectives section. Um, this just provides an overview of the topics, events, and issues we'll be studying. And as you scroll down, you'll see here just what I told you. Um, here's the list of what is due during that unit. Um, so by the first Sunday, and then during the second week, some things are due during that Wednesday of the second week, second Wednesday, and then also by the second Sunday. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, I think it should, but if it doesn't, please let me know and I'll help out. Also, you'll need to do a couple of discussion board posts over the course of the semester. Um, the first two are due on Sunday, July 7th. So those are separate from the work in the learning modules. You go to the discussion board to complete those. That's where you want to look at the discussion board rules document uh, that's in the syllabus and the syllabus tab. Um, so just have an idea of what you need to do for those and make plans to complete those sometime between the beginning of the course and July 7th. Um, there are also objectives for each unit and then the video that I mentioned, most of which are getting kind of old now. So hopefully I'll get to make those new soon. I click the arrow to go to the next section. So we're working our way through the learning module. Uh, you can either use these navigation arrows here or the table of contents. Here are the readings um, that you'll need to complete for unit two. Remember that you have that first week to do the readings, to post the tweets. Um, you'll read more about this in the reading tweets instructions, but you need to post 15 tweets in each unit, two through six. Unit one is the exception. You only have to do five in unit one. Um, but in units two through six, the reading tweets are where you will kind of take notes on what you're reading and post them to the rest of us so that we can respond to each other there. So 10 of the tweets need to respond specifically to the assigned readings, talk about events, issues, historical figures that you found um, significant, interesting, shocking, whatever it may be. And then five of those tweets need to be replies to one another. Um, Morgan, uh, the chapter is in that book. That's the digital text. And as uh, I mentioned in some emails, and some of you have talked to me about in, in separate emails, um, there is no way of using financial aid currently to purchase the digital text, something I've been working on with the folks um, in distance learning and elsewhere in CNM, but I've not yet resolved yet. So I do apologize for that. I know it's a problem. Um, and for that reason, if you click on these numbers, um, and then this is a part of chapter two, but it's kind of a separate um, section, um, they'll open a PDF version of the readings so that you can complete the readings until you're able to purchase the digital text. Um, so that's there until the disbursement happens in July. Um, so these will be in place for units um, one, two, and three. By unit four, though, you will need to have purchased the text. In each unit, there are also these questions to consider as you read. Uh, there are no assignments associated with those. They're just there to help you think about um, what you might need to pay attention to as you do the reading. Each uh, learning module, each unit has film clips associated with it as well. And as I've written at the beginning of the first few, um, I do realize there's no way you have time to watch all of the film clips that I've added here. Um, so these are here, um, not for your information, but as um, supplements to the reading. So there are ways for you to see different perspectives on the things that we've been reading. Um, they're also for you to, um, this one has weird formatting, I don't know why. I tried to fix it, but anyway, um, they're there to help you better understand things that you might not have understood during the readings, but if you don't get through all of them, that's okay. Every now and then I add an FYI section in a learning module. This one's about the Idle No More movement that has to do with indigenous peoples um, and their place in the modern world. So again, if you're interested, take a look at that. This section of each module reminds you to complete your reading tweets. And I just explained kind of what those are, um, but this will have you uh, link to another, or sorry, this is another link to the assignment instructions in case you kind of forget what you need to do with those. And then this will take you to Twitter. If you want to use TweetDeck, you can. I do, but it's, it's your same Twitter information with your Twitter account and login information, just a different uh, interface of interacting with it. This one will take you straight to the course hashtag. And if you go here to the reading tweets um, section, there is a video tutorial about how to get started with Twitter, how to reply, 
and how to search the course hashtag <clears throat> on your own. Uh, clicking to the next one in the table of contents. This is where you will complete your timeline submissions. And so you will click to launch. Also, here's another link to the timeline assignment instructions. Uh, but click to launch, and this will take you to the folder where you will post your document that you've completed for the ID step. So remember, with the timeline assignment, again, all of the information is over here and via the syllabus. Uh, but with that assignment, you will complete your ID step. You'll write uh, all of your information in a Word document or similar, whatever word processor you use. <coughs> You will submit that here, and then you'll also submit to the class timeline on TikiTaki. Um, that is explained in the video tutorial over in the timeline tab. Once you get to the connection step, you'll do the same thing, but you'll post the document here, and then your connection step to your entry on the course timeline. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize for my allergies and my, my throat here. That should all make a lot of sense once you've looked at the timeline assignment information. And again, also remember, I'm trying to walk you through everything we'll be doing this semester, so please don't get overwhelmed. Um, you'll have plenty of time to do all of these various assignments. Just to show you what the timeline tab looks like, since I mentioned um, you can get to these assignment drop boxes via um, the tab as well as the learning module. When you click here, the first thing you see is a link to the timeline. So you'll want to use that to get to the course timeline on TikiTaki. Here are the timeline assignment instructions. So you'll want to read over those. And then here is the tutorial. This first tutorial um, walks you through how to use TikiTaki, how to submit to the class timeline. And then the second one talks about the actual content um, of your submissions. So what is it that you need to be writing about, not just how to post it. Uh, finally, this one talks about historical significance. One of the major elements of these assignments is for you to discuss historical significance, and so this video says a little more about that. Going all the way down then, depending on which unit you're in, you'll click on the appropriate one. Since I showed you unit two, I'll click unit two, and you'll notice that this is the same thing we just saw in the learning modules. Um, so again, two different ways to get to things. If you went away from the learning module to complete your work on the timeline and you want to just get straight to um, this submission area, just use the timeline tab. It probably will be quicker. Going back to the learning module for unit two, you can only go as quick as my internet uh, connection. Here we go. Um, so going back here, let me just show you the last couple of things. <clears throat> uh, there's a journal link here as well. So after the timeline submissions, this is the other element that's due on the second Sunday of each unit. Um, there are instructions in the syllabus, syllabus tab, and when you go to submit your journal work. Um, so there are plenty of places for you to remind yourself what the guidelines are for these journal assignments. Um, you can click here, it will launch it. You can click over here and click on unit two journal. Um, and then each unit has a self-assessment and looking ahead section. So what this does is it reminds you of the due dates for things. Well, first, it has you think about whether or not you've completed all of the work that you should have completed for that two-week period. And then looking ahead, it reminds you of all of the assignments that you'll need to do that aren't just included in the regular learning modules. <clears throat> so I already mentioned the discussion board. Um, here's another reminder about that. Excuse me. Then also, you'll have to come up with a topic for the final project. Um, that does come due while I'm gone on my cruise. Of course, I'll be back a couple of days after that is due. Um, so if you had last minute questions that you just couldn't get to uh, before I left, um, you can just hold on to those and ask me when I get back and then we can work that out. Um, I would recommend taking a look at that before the 15th of June though, um, just so that you can ask any questions you have before I'm gone um, so that you can submit your topic uh, by the 23rd. Um, then the bibliography is due August 4th and the final project itself on August 9th. All of that is explained again in the final project um, information that is here and also in the syllabus. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, please let me know what questions you have whenever you have them. I'm always happy to help. I don't know why I didn't hide that already. Apologize for that. Most of the video with that, that bar up. 
<clears throat> um, but again, I will answer questions whenever I can, whenever you have them. Uh, please let me know what they are, and I will help you out with that. Um, just other things here are, are help for you. Online office hours or Monday mornings, um, you can use that link to connect to those. I haven't yet figured out Pronto IM. That's the replacement for the Blackboard IM feature. Uh, I don't know if folks are using it or not. Um, nobody was using Blackboard IM, so I didn't worry about it too much. If you do want to communicate with me through Pronto, let me know and I'll set mine up um, so that we can do that. Um, and then again, CNM libraries, that'll be very helpful for the final project. And then other kinds of, of help resources for Blackboard and also for just being a CNM student. All right, so that's a lot. Again, that's I, I showed you one module, um, but that's essentially the pattern for our course. Please let me know what questions you have whenever you have them. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you and to learning from you, and I hope that you have a great summer term.